my heroes, the ones that never succeed completely. I think there are no rules in art. Macro is the only contemporary art institution in Italy, contemporary art museum that is for free. Good art, or like culture in general, helps to question who we are, where we are, and uh, what we do. Art became uh, a very professionalized system, and, uh, and there is a lack of um, of personality. Art is not about explaining, bringing you in and according to your knowledge and to your instruments of, you, have, you can read it through different layers. To poetry and to poets, they, are, uh, they, they do something based on intuition and an urgency of expressions rather than trying to analyze the present and to give a, a clear report about what is happening. We live in a very dark times. So my name is uh, Luca Lopinto and I'm the artistic director of Macro Museum, where we are in, in this moment. And um, my background is in, uh, is in uh, rooted in art, in the sense that I study in Rome art history. And while I was studying here, I founded together with three friends uh, a magazine, a publishing house that still exists, that is called Nero. And, uh, but while um, I was doing the magazine, I also started to make exhibitions as a freelance. And uh, I did it uh, for many years uh, until uh, 2014 when I, when I moved to Vienna and I started to work as a curator at Kunsthalle in Wien. And in 2020, instead I was appointed artistic director of Macro and so I came back to Rome and to, yeah, to follow this new journey. I decided to study art because I, I remember it was a summer when I was, I think I was 13, and I read this diary of Andy Warhol. And I really, I was really impressed by the life and that, you know, you have so many people from different backgrounds, from cinema, theater, fashion, architecture. And I thought that these people were having fun and producing also great work. So this idea of that life and the work was connected, was just one thing, and was not a profession, to me was very inspiring and attractive. So I say, I want to be part of this type of milieu. And, uh, and in a way, I found myself in that sort of uh, world. So I always had like a food base in the, like in the publishing and a food base in the, more in the art, so has been always very transdisciplinary the way I, I've been working and uh, I've been always very into cinema, music, dance and visual art. And uh, then I ended up working in the art maybe because like contemporary art and uh, the contemporary art world in a way embraces much easier other disciplines and you have more freedom um, yeah, to work with different mediums as it's happening in this museum. So the program I envision for Macro is the result of obsessions that I've been um, uh, feeding uh, since the very beginning. But um, yeah, maybe I would, stay, I would say that it started by a fascination towards a way of living and a way of resisting an ordinary life. I think art is essential today, even if maybe it's not considered something necessary for everyone. I think it's an important tool because art, I mean, good art or like culture in, in general, helps to question who we are, where we are, 
and uh, what we do and uh, so it's almost like philosophy in a way um, so could be something enjoyable that can can be a bit more in a way immersive and touching different uh, uh, elements and uh, but at the same time could be very um, intellectual uh, uh, intellectually compelling and uh, um, and to me especially uh, exhibition making is uh, an intriguing tool because could be done in a also quite authorial and creative way working with living artists so that's also another element you know art when you work with uh, in the field of contemporary art you are mainly also dealing you're in dialogue with authors and with people that are making something and so you have your your chance of being part of a dialogue also a process of um, of making uh, and this to me is uh, yeah is something exciting I think ethic is required in life you know I don't I, I don't um, detach art too much from from a way of living as I told you so yeah I think is important I mean to me ethics working as a f for instance running an institution funded with public money the ethic is trying to remember always that you are addressing a very different type of um, audience and uh, and trying to make accessible without losing complexities certain cultural productions and uh, that maybe some people would not encounter outside of 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 this space and uh, macro is the only contemporary art institution in italy contemporary art museum that is for free and also um, uh, you know it's an important element this because uh, of course, nowadays there is a lot of discussion about accessibility, inclusivity. Uh, sometimes I'm a bit skeptical and critical about the whole discussion because the risk is that there is a rhetoric around institutions and around uh, um, the art world uh, because what is discussed is there is a gap between the discussion and the reality of the program and of the making of the institution. So here, in a very humble way, we really try to, to do our best to, to, to encounter the needs on one end of artists and artistic production, and on the other of a community that is a local community, but is also an international community. My ethical principles in terms of what I do is really to to be faithful to, to the artists, to their ideas, to their thinking, and not to, uh, and not to make the institution as a constrained space, rather a space for artistic freedom in terms of expression, and where you can really showcase with some filters, but at the same time with no, with not too much filter, the the artistic voices of today or of the past, and also um, uh, giving visibilities to also minor figures and minor histories. And I think, yeah, it's kind of combination of different uh, languages, histories, and. Um, and uh, and temporal uh, and temporalities, you know. So the the program of macro is is quite mixed in that sense. As uh, talking about Nero, about the magazine, was also very transdisciplinary and trying to put together as a puzzle um, different uh, uh, practices that 
can maybe look distant on a first uh, uh, sight, but at the end they are uh, presented within a very precise choreography. What I do is not a profession, so I don't... Uh, it's not that when I leave the museum I like reading a book or visiting an exhibition, listening to music, going to a concert is part of my free time or part of my job. It's one life, it's all in once. I think there are no rules in art and so you can uh, study art and being uh, a bad artist or the opposite or you can start to work when you are uh, 70 years old. Last year we did an exhibition of Lisa Ponti, the daughter of Joe Ponti. She had her first show when she was 70 years old and she's an amazing artist. And, and sometimes we forget this, that in art there are no rules. And so I don't believe you can be an art that you born like with a DNA. Uh, I think you have many ways of, of being a cultural practitioner today. And uh, honestly, I've been always fascinated by people with mixed background. Uh, that are less professionalized in terms of background and uh, history uh, because there are more possibilities of producing something a bit more personal uh, rather than following a certain path. And that's the problem now that art became uh, a very professionalized system and, uh, and there is a lack of um, of personalities, you know. You feel uh, kind of average, you tend to see more or less, uh, not same things, but you know, it's, it's rare that there is a click and you encounter something that you don't know or you don't understand. And to me, instead of getting immediately the meaning of something, I'm much more fascinated when when I'm facing a cultural object or non-object that I don't understand immediately. But unfortunately, also in the art context, we tend to, to choose a more linear type of direction. So we tend to see a show and we want to immediately to understand what it's about. And I think it's uh, uh, the ambiguity being in between, uh, it's instead uh, the power of art and, and today it's important that, especially in a world where um, thinking and opinions are very polarized, so there is very strong antagonism between positions, should be instead um, providing a space of a real confrontation also between people they don't think the same way. Art education, uh, I mean, it's a broad topic and it's a broad term. Uh, if I relate art education to a museum, uh, I'm not a fan of considering a museum as a pedagogical instrument. Um, because I feel that um, art is not about explaining. I think if there is a, an interesting uh, cultural project, whether it's a film, is a, is a song, is, a, is an exhibition, is an artwork, has the capacity of bringing you in and according to your knowledge and to your instruments of, you, have, you can read it through different layers. Um, so when you go into a museum or you're visiting a Shruna museum, very often there is the tendency to consider the visitor someone that has to be educated. Um, uh, while I think uh, it's, uh, I believe it's more uh, important to provide tools for reading, but not explaining, you know. To leave the room to project something personal. Because if I go, for instance, to a, to a show and 
each work is explaining about the artist, wants to say this and that. I'm just a, it's a passive experience. I don't have space to, to say something. And in a way, I'm also very much influenced by what I'm reading. And so the risk is like, is a bit history, that you repeat the same plot. But as I mentioned before, history is also excluding, excluded and is excluding figures they don't belong to that and so i think it's important to keep a flexibility which is not being against you know it's not what i'm saying is not elitarian that you don't have to explain but you have to provide a bit of context and tools but not explanation so uh, um, i don't uh, i think you can um, you can find many ways of, um, of sharing ideas with others that could be a sort of education. And, um, and instead, if I think of education in Italy, there is a bit, uh, there is a um, strong lack of the educational apparatus and systems. And, um, so, for example, the idea of having at Macro um, um, a space focused on graphic design, one focused on experimental music, one on publishing, so about different mediums, is also to fill this gap and to give an opportunity to young people to discover uh, something that maybe is not uh, they don't encounter in their universities or academies. And, and now the, also you have many private academies that are the ones that are uh, able to, you know, they have the means to invite serious professionals while public uh, universities, schools, they are of course very precarious because you have to consider the the pre precariousness of Italy and, uh, and there are not so much investments towards contemporary al culture and, uh, and education in this field. I'm not particularly interested to know what is art, what is not art and how to improve the production because I would feel uh, uh, too arrogant to do that. And, um, and again, the risk of putting the discourse in that way is against to kind of polarizing the thing while um, it's all about shades, you know, it's all about details and uh, not about, you know, measure thing or at least maybe uh, this is, on, uh, is up to uh, historians or uh, I'm I, I feel much more close to poetry and to poets they are uh, they, they do something based on intuition and an urgency of expressions rather than trying to analyze the present and to give a, a clear report about what is happening I really like um, um, uh, American poet William Carlos Williams and Patrizia Cavalli, an amazing poet who died recently, but I don't remember by art the, man, the poet. Uh, beauty, well, of course, is important, but again, I don't know exactly what beauty means because it's. Uh, um, I mean, I have problem with project theoretical concepts or huge. Uh, words, terms or concepts from the top to the bottom. I rather prefer to to start from a, from a zoom in to zoom out, rather the opposite. So uh, uh, what is intriguing for me of the idea of beauty is exactly what is, intrig is intriguing me about the idea of art, that I don't know exactly what it is. And according to the very precise context, I can 
uh, kind of formulate a more precise thought or opinion. I grew up with a sort of nihilist uh, uh, vision of the world, and uh, but at the same time I try to be very optimistic in in what I do in the way at least I I. I also conceiving, uh, uh, I don't know, shows. I, 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 yeah, I would say I'm more nihilistic in terms of feeling. Uh, um, yeah, also with myself, I'm very self doubtful, very, and uh, and more and more. Uh, I start to feel that I'm right because considering what's happening today and the way the old society, the path and the direction that the society is taking today, it's really, yeah, we live in a very dark, we live in a very dark times. So it's important to be optimistic, but optimistic should not be um, turn into a sort of rhetoric uh, or not being a kind of religious uh, dimension that you know is a should not perceive as a shortcut uh, to avoid facing reality. I grew up between the analog and the digital uh, time so I'm completely bipolar and I'm uh, very schizophrenic because on one hand if I have a mobile phone and I'm reading a poem for instance I'm questioning the tool at the same time I don't care about the tool I'm, I'm just reading a poem from a phone so there is a constant uh, uh, move between these two positions and uh, it's not very healthy as a, as a position but could be productive because you are always questioning things. So um, the analogers are sometimes to me too paternalistic and too nostalgic and the uh, digital natives, they don't have an idea of a world without that. And uh, so they are just uh, dancing without, you know, they start dancing without starting to be still and start to dance and so you're dancing and you don't have you didn't have time to think about what you're doing and um, so yeah in a way I feel to be more like a DJ that is facing two different type of crowds and trying to make everyone happy and dancing my heroes have been always um, um, people that have been forgotten or overlooked, the ones that never succeed completely, and um, yeah, kind of mavericks, the, or the outlaws, the ones that didn't follow the, uh, the path that many, that most of the people were following. And, uh, but again, there was a fascination with the urgency of life that didn't accomplish and didn't want to get along with any sort of uh, compromises. So these are my heroes. And, uh, uh, and of course, our, uh, we're talking about people that they didn't have uh, maybe an easy life in terms of recognition. Maybe they, they were never full recognized during the life, but unless they, they were very kind of, they leave something 100% and which in a way can sound cheesy and romantic, but uh, I don't know why. I've been, um, um, I've been always more fascinated by the ones that failed than the rather that won. My main challenge in life uh, is to uh, 
trust my myself and uh, and uh, yeah and trust to who I am without uh, I'm very kind of I tend to be very radical and not to accept compromises and um, and I and, and I feel that it's important to be faithful and to and it's very hard because we live in a world where there is more and more individualism and it's also very it's hard to kind of survive in any circumstances um, so um, I'll try to to keep myself in this very doubtful and also difficult kind of dimension of always being in a position of losing the ground under your feet and then uh, being solid and uh, and coherent with with what I like and with my obsession so yeah it's not easy maybe it's a kind of uh, another example of um, uh, bipolarism I mean working in institution is a uh, uh, it's complicated because you have many responsibilities and it is especially difficult if you want to bring a certain experimental approach and trying to uh, to kind of to share it with a wider audience and so you are like in a threshold so it's very thin and subtle, the line that you have to follow to avoid going in one direction or another. So it's like, to me, the way I envision it is like promoting uh, Tarkovsky with, uh, with a graphic design of, uh, of the Marvels, of Star Wars, you know, to create a mashup and because uh, very often, uh, in different cultural fields, people stand, tend to be very self-referential. And uh, but maybe since I, I've been running a magazine which was also for free, and I kind of work, and uh, and I'm a friend and uh, of, with people from really different um, worlds. I'm, I'm very curious, so I tend to detach myself from what I do. And, uh, and to me, it's very healthy and it's very productive to spend time with people that are, they don't do what I do. And they're also especially also critical of what I do. And uh, because if they are like intellectually honest, you can really, um, you can really learn um, something and uh, the problem of working institutions in Italy is mainly due to the fact that still politics uh, is influencing a lot the institutions and it's not really recognized the work you do for what you do and that's not it's not about the content but it's something about you know uh, something else and that is very it's very problematic and um, and there is not always a respect of the of yeah of the professionalism in the sense that you know sometimes you can have uh, uh, if a city is changing the if a municipality is changing the governance and the government they could uh, decide just to change the whole theme of a museum with no reason or uh, you have a, uh, you could have a minister uh, of far right that uh, is uh, is pretending that culture is a propaganda tool or uh, so that's to me is the main issue about institution and uh, yeah because you know, individualism is another topic. is about you know, it's more about the society. So it's of course is uh, something that is affecting the museum, but not directly. And uh, 
but I, I, I and all my team, we do our best to, to make this museum a gathering place. And we, we really do our best uh, to create a community based on maybe on principles that are a bit different from what is in the what is outside of here and uh, and that could be important you know museums are also safe island so they are uh, they should keep their antenna up and to be in sync with the reality of the world what's happening but at the same time they have to put the antenna down and uh, and to go to think different so it's about having different speed it's like being in a train and look at outside of the window it's good to have when the train is moving very fast what you see is completely blurry but when the train is stopping at one station the image and the landscape becomes still you know it's the between it's the same difference between uh, cinema and photography and when the there is not there is there is uh, there is no uh, one better than another it's just different and um, and i think that should be the way uh, a, muse a museum should operate through these different speeds rather than say ah we have not to f the museum should be grounded in the idea of the museum of being the deposit of time of history but it's also wrong to think that the museum should be completely instead uh, engaged only in the present and forget the, the heritage of an institution or what a museum is and that is very problematic because you have to really find the exact thing and uh, um, and again it's, a bit, it's about like DJing if you have two tracks one is like a hard techno with a high BPM and the other one is like uh, uh, Vivaldi uh, so you have to find a way to put them in sync in a natural way where you don't feel a contrast in terms of harmony but yeah as a good flow in terms of music and that's uh, that's the main challenge uh, to me running an institution but also is the main challenge that I see as an observer and a visitor when I go to and I visit other institutions of any kind. And I wrote my first thesis on a Cuban artist, uh, Felix Gonzalez Torres, and the second uh, was on Mike Kelly, American artist. And, um, and of course, your uh, heroes and gods change from time to time. And, um, but yeah, my gods are the one that protect me but at the same time I do not see them and I can have the impression that they are not there and they are not protecting me and even if they are not there they are still my gods you know while I think gods you feel they should be always present so even if they turn the back to me they will uh, remain what they are <laughs>